This is my first Atari video. I'm making it because my friend made a uh, video of his collection of Atari 800XL games, and uh, I gave that to him about in the late 90s, like 99, I think. And so I have a large Atari collection. I show him some of that. And I start off simple, just by showing my 130XE, a close-up of it, followed by uh, my system setup that I have in the garage, which is my 130XE with a Toshiba 14-inch CRT TV and simply a CX40 Atari VCS joystick. Then I show a couple of other just small items. Um, my Atari Basic Manual, the version that came out for the Atari 1200. Uh, I show five Atari uh, Max cartridges, which are eight megabits each, which is uh, one megabyte cartridges. Uh, my IDE 2, which allows me to use software loaded from a fat uh, formatted um, compact flash card. And finally, my disk emulator, which is an SIO2 SD. And I will show examples of using all that stuff, although I don't use my compact flash reader in this video. Then I show a listing of the first cartridge, followed by some descriptions. And then I type in a two-liner, and I guess you would figure it says hello world, and you know what, you'd be right. I do close-ups of several cartridges, uh, two original. They are Star Raiders and Defender. And after that, I load uh, some software from my Atari Max cart, my first one, and that is Beam Rider, and Bounty Bob Strikes Back, Stellar Shuttle, Oil's Well, Dig Dug, and the uh, XE edition of Mario Bro, so the first Mario Brothers game. And I do show um, Encounter because I wanted to show Quinn uh, this game uh, as well because it's one of my favorites and he played it in his uh, video. Finally, I wrap up the video uh, with uh, loading two games from my SIO2 SD, which uh, acts like a uh, 1050 disk drive. And uh, I load up uh, Temple of Apshai Trilogy and a game that was um, ported over from the Commodore 64 in 2018 called Stunt Car Racer. Enjoy the video. This one can use a lot of work, but I want to get started. Rather than never starting, I just jump in and give it a go. I hope you like it. I'm not sure if this is a controversial choice, but this here, this is an Atari 130XE. It is an 8-bit computer. It's one of the last ones that was made by Atari. It was made, I think, and came out in 1985, around the same time as the Atari ST. Why is it controversial? Well, it's really not, but um, it's got, you know, a lot of people prefer the other computers, like the 800, um, the XL. I actually like the XL a lot, too. I like this one because it's got some extras that the other ones didn't have, because it came later. It has 128K RAM can make a small RAM disk out of that. And there's some other things that it can do. I'm not going to get into that. I was going to show my entire collection, which is huge for the Atari. I'm not going to do that either. I'm just going to play some games tonight. This is my first video um, that I'm going to make it in my Atari series. And I'm making it because my buddy Quinn um, and I, uh, he, we used to live in the same town together. And uh, before he moved away to the east coast of the United States, I gave him a collection of Atari stuff. And he uploaded a video to YouTube a couple days ago showing that collection again and playing a few games. And that's what I'm going to do here. I was going to try to show what I have. And I'm going to a little bit, but it's just a very tiny, tiny portion of my collection. Let's back up and see what I've got going here on this desk. My setup is quite simple. I've got my 130XE hooked up. I don't know if you can see in the background over there, I've got my power supply for my 130XE. I've got a Toshiba um, flat screen 14 inch CRT, uh, and it's going to be used um, in composite mode. I also, this can also put out um, S video. I may decide to use S video at some point in the future. Probably not. I actually, I mean, it makes a huge difference, but you almost, it's almost too good. Um, and over there, I have my CX40, and that's what I'll be using to play some games. And now I'm going to show a few of the uh, items that I'll be using tonight. What we have here is what I'm going to be showing tonight. This is um, qu quite a collection of sort of new stuff, but when I say new, some of this stuff is pretty old. Uh, this is from 2010. These are cartridges. These are made by Atari Max. Um, right here, each one of these is 8 megabits, which means they're 1 megabyte. Um, and since this came out, much better stuff has come out. I still prefer these. Um, this is Each one of these holds 1 megabyte, and you can store up to, well, you can store floppies on there, and uh, uh, I think a uh, floppy disk is about 100K. I think they're actually 90K or something like that. Um, it can emulate floppy disks to some extent. Not everything works perfectly. And um, for that case, games that I put on here, and all these are just games. I take these games, and I uh, I prefer to I stuff in one 
uh, cartridge and I play, I don't know, there's a choice of like 20 games or something each on each one. So something like that. So maybe if there's maybe 100 games on these. However, this here is um, a compact flash card and what I'm able to do is store up to one gigabyte of uh, data on there. That's a lot of stuff. Obviously more than uh, probably was ever released altogether on practic practical programs. Um, I have an NTSC machine so I can't easily use uh, PAL software, so I usually use that under emulation. So the way this works is this device here plugs into the USB device of a Windows PC. Um, I think also maybe DOS machines. I don't know if it supports Macs or Linux, but either way, in my case, I use it under Windows. And then I take one of these and I plug it in there and then I can program each one. Um, this one doesn't work that way. This one has a compact flash card. I put it into a compact flash reader and I can just use it that way. And Atari Basic. The reason I have this here is because I like Basic a lot. Atari Basic is pretty good. Um, I've been playing over the last few days with uh, TI 994A, which has a really slow TI Basic, although uh, just last night I was using Extended Basic for that system and it turns out it's much faster. Um, and maybe not quite as fast as Atari Basic, but it's getting close and it's closing in. Um, so tonight, uh, rather than showing the rest of my collection, I have, I'm looking around my garage, I probably have, oh my goodness, I'd say 25 to 30 boxes worth of um, classic gaming stuff. A lot of it's for the uh, Ataris. Um, a lot of it is because I, I thinned down my collection in the 90s. I used to have so much stuff, but a friend of mine um, uh, passed away a, a couple years ago and I inherited his huge collection. Um, so uh, I have a lot of it, and I've given it away. I've met a couple of people that are local to me here in New Mexico, and I've given them stuff. I still have a huge collection, especially books. But do we care about that? Yes, we do, because this is my collection. I'm sharing it with you. This is a really neat device, too. I'm going to clear the way here, and I'm going to uh, put it up front. Now, I'm trying to make these videos easier um, and not be so particular, and I want to thank my buddy, Quinn for that. I'm not sure whether or not I will be using this tonight, but what this is, is it emulates a disk drive, um, a five and a quarter inch disk drive, and it uh, allows me to have, um, I have an SD card in here, and I load up software that requires to be loaded from a disk drive. This plugs back into the Atari just like you would um, a disk drive and lets you uh, use it. I do want to make a quick note, a side note, uh, just before, well, from the last scene I just uh, was shooting uh, right at the end of it. My wife uh, came out here to tell me a friend of ours called and she said I should look outside because uh, she knows I'm into stargazing lately. And uh, she said Jupiter and Saturn and the moon are all right next to each other. And uh, by coincidence today I got uh, for my birthday a pair of um, 7x35 binoculars. And so um, with them, and they were very inexpensive too because um, I plan to get a telescope but I wanted to start off with a pair of binoculars. And um, I could see Jupiter's moons and um, so it was cool to be able to see the moons of Jupiter, and of course Jupiter, along with the moon all in the same field of uh, view. Pretty neat. Alright, so I might use that. What I am going to use tonight is I'll back up and I'll show you those cartridges once more. So what we have are these five cartridges I made. I made this one in 2010. Yeah, I called it a wonderful Atari 8-bit uh, games, volume 1. And this one I made in 2014. I think I made these around the same time, about 2014-2015. Each one of these, like I said earlier, has quite a few games on it. And the way I keep track of these games, and I can find them easily, is I made a notebook and I type them all up. All of these games and these collections are actually available in the Atari Max forums. If you have these carts and you want to try these out, you can actually download exactly this compilation I made and uh, burn it to your cart. But you have to be a member of the forums in order to uh, download stuff. So uh, tonight I'm just going to be playing some games. I'm going to point my camera at the screen and record. Uh, I do have a way to capture footage um, through composite, although I have a, a frame meister, which is great, but I kind of messed it up uh, this past Christmas, or so about seven months ago. I um, plugged in a cable that was too tight when I unplugged it, pulled part of the frame meister apart. Um, and the frame meister isn't known to be really heavily made, but it was my own fault. Uh, quite a shame. Well, um, Atari fans out there, however many of you are watching, some of you are friends of mine, some of you maybe never heard of me before, ran across me by accident, because you heard this is um, the crappiest video ever made, or perhaps the best video ever made, I don't know. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in Volume 1 and play a couple of games off of it and see what I, uh, not what I think, see what you think, because I already know what I think. I think this thing is incredible. Um, it's a wonderful device. And I might try loading up uh, maybe a, um, a game on the uh, 
um, uh, SIO2 SD, which allows me to load floppy disks. But for now, let's load up a game. Rather than just jump in and see what we have on the cartridge, this is exactly what we have on cartridge one. There's 35 different games, um, and what they are are um, a labeled A through Z here, just like they are on the cartridge. And here I say when they came out. I say what the game is called. I say who made it. Sometimes I'll make a note on the side, like this is a hack. This is a color version of Load Runner. Um, this is a hack. This is a color version of Championship Load Runner. Uh, Pitfall 2: Lost Caverns. Um, this is a hack, for, so you can just play the Atari level. Someone did that for me in the Atari H forums. Um, and like this one doesn't say, but I didn't realize that Zorro, uh, which is one of my favorite games, has two versions: a cassette version and a disc version. And the cassette version, so it would fit on a, a tape. It is missing a whole bunch of levels, which is sad, because that's the version I have on here. But not a big deal. I can play it from floppy. I have real floppy drives and tons of hardware. Um, and But that's about it. I'm going to... Uh, next thing you're going to see is maybe me uh, handling my system a little bit, and then uh, I'll do a close-up of the screen. In the background, I'm listening to uh, The Cure, Boys Don't Cry, an album from 1979. Why am I telling you this? Because I keep turning it back on and then thinking while I'm doing that, I'm like, hey, I know what else I want to show. So are we ever going to get to the games? Well, of course we are. But in the meantime, if you to go to, to the um, Atari Max forums, you can check out, like I said, um, these compilations that I made. And for the very first one, only the first one, I made all these notes about each game that I picked. And since there's 35 games, I made short notes about them. And I'll just pick a game that probably many people have heard of, like Frogger. Let's go to look at the notes I wrote for Frogger, number 12. Um, so Frogger. For some reason, I like the, I like this better than the arcade version. I had John Car Harris sign my cartridge back in the late 90s. It was, um, only later that I found out that the cartridge version is a bit different from the disc version that John programmed. Uh, and that's a good example of something, oh, that I wrote, uh, and, um, there's way more to that story. I mean, my buddy, uh, Chris and I, uh, met John Harris, the programmer of Frogger. And, uh, and at the World of Atari 1998, and we had breakfast with him just by chance. We, we'd seen him talk the previous day, and the next morning we were having breakfast, and he was in line to have breakfast, and so he was asking to join us, and he did. Cool guy, cool guy. Um, so thanks, John, for that. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, maybe look at these notes while I'm playing some of the games and see what I had to say, because I wrote these ten years ago, and who knows what I had to say back then. One of the problems I always faced before... When I was making these videos was I wanted them to be perfect, I wanted them to be exact, I tried to plan them out. I'm not doing that anymore. So I, this is a big thank you to my buddy Quinn who got me started on this endeavor of making these videos. His videos are, seem to be off the cuff, he's just filming it, he's not even using a tripod most of the time, and I really like his videos. So I imagine if I can like his videos, other people can like my videos and they don't have to be perfect. I can just talk. So I can screw around and not put things in the order I originally sort of envisioned, kind of. And so here I have a computer, and here I have the Atari Basic Manual. I looked quite a while to get this version of the manual. It's, I think it's the same as the one that came with the 800, except it's in a different format. I believe this is the one that was made for the um, uh, Atari 1200XL. And I think that's the only one that this came with. After that, Atari um, got really cheap. And this is actually a manual, so you can learn how to program in Basic, even if you've never touched a computer before, and even if... You don't have any of the books, you can still learn BASIC. Later on, they came with um, a, a pamphlet that just told you the commands, and that was it. You couldn't learn BASIC from it, which is a shame. Um, but that's okay, because um, there are plenty of books out there. There's hundreds and hundreds of Atari books that you could have bought back in the 80s, and you can still find most of them used today. And many of them have been scanned, and you can find them online. So I'm showing BASIC here because, probably not in this episode, but I will be using some, uh, in, in future episodes, I'm going to try playing some basic games, especially some, there were some of my favorites from Compute uh, Magazine and Antic and Analog Magazines. Um, all right, so maybe that's be the last bit of basic. Maybe I'll type in a, a Hello World or something again. I did that just yesterday on the TR-99. Um, so let's see what uh, this Atari can do when I turn it on. This is my Atari computer, and it's now on. It's ready for action. I just uh, have gone to basic. And I'm going to type in, like I threatened earlier, the uh, standard program, hello world here. See if I can't get into lowercase, hello world, and of course if I press run, oh, of course now it's got to be uppercase, <laughs> so hello world. Um, I guess if I want to edit that line, thankfully, I have a full screen editor. So I can just go over here and get to the end. 
I'm not taking full advantage of what this thing can do, but um, that's not going to work. So I go down here and it says run. Um, of course, I can do the standard go to 20, go to 10, which I'm going to do. And I'm going to press run. And of course, I get that. So now I can break it out of there. Man. So one of the big drawbacks with this machine, the 130XC, is it's not great for programming on. I mean, it's, it is great for programming on, but the keyboard is not the best, kind of mushy. But it works. Uh, using the TI-99, the TI-99 uh, that I've been using over the last few days is, has a much better keyboard. Um, the one, uh, my, I think my favorite keyboard is the 1200XL. After that, it's the 800XL. And I guess basically the 600XL has a similar keyboard, well, almost the same. I think it's a different mechanism on some of them, but that's we're not talking about that. Let me see if I can't remember how to get, like, there's actually shortcuts you can skip around parts of the screen, but I don't remember how to do them on top of my head. So I'm going to uh, back up here, put a space, and I think it's a semicolon I can put here. And let's see what happens. Yep, okay. So, no big deal. Um, just something you can do in, in basic. Now, you don't have to worry too much. I am going to uh, break out of this and do a zoom in a little bit. It'll get blurry here and there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my first uh, uh, cartridge, which is uh, one of the 8-bit games number one. So first I shut off the system, and I make some noise, move around my chair, reach in front of the camera, and reach behind the system, plug it in, and turn it on. What do I got? I have a purple screen, so I was able to uh, choose, you know, make some options here. Uh, so I chose purple, and I... Um, I'm uh, now able to go back and forth up the screen. If I press up and down, so let's see, down, obviously, up. If I um, press left, it goes to the top. If I press up, bottom, it goes to the, or right, it goes to the bottom. If I press right one more time, it goes to, so it's really one full screen at a time. Um, so I'm going to ask you guys what I should play. And since you can't answer, I'm going to choose for you. I'm going to play a game that uh, my buddy uh, Quinn was playing um, when I watched his video today. And it is, um, I think it's on here. Yeah, minor 2049er. I'm going to play that, minor 2049er. I'm going to play Encounter Earth. These are two games he played today. My favorite game on here, one of my favorite 8 bit games of all time, is called Beam Rider. It's by Activision. It came out in 84. I got that um, for the Commodore 64 back in the day. So right now, I don't know how loud it's going to be. What does the color look like? It's probably a little washed out, but that's okay. Um, I am going to do some experimentation over the next week or two and see if I can't capture the TI-99. Uh, probably a little bit too loud. I'm going to see if I can't capture the TI-99 and the, uh, uh, the Atari 8 uh, using my Fairmeister and see what I can get out of there. Anyway, let's just start the game. There's some cheats and stuff I can do, but I'm not going to try to do the cheats. I'm not going to turn it up too loud because I do want to just play. And I'm going to just talk while I play because it makes the videos more interesting for me. It's the first level. I can beat this game um, pretty easily. Well, I don't know about anymore. It's been a few years, but there was a time when I could wrap it quite a bit or pretty easily. Um, this was uh, the original version of um, Blade, not Blade Runner. Where did I get Blade Runner? Runner 2049er. And um, it was later ported to many, 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 many systems, including uh, a game that came out for the 2600. Um, which is absolutely horrible, um, and it, uh, oh, am I going to make it to get that guy? Yeah, they start flashing. Excellent. Cleared the first screen. The 2600 version of this game is it's unplayable. It's unplayable. And that's in, saying a lot, because I, I'm pretty fond of the 2600. I can play some of those unplayable games that people complain about. Uh, my buddy Chris and I, we actually tried playing that game, and I, I, maybe we eventually got past the first level. But, uh, not easily. Um, heck, Chris, did we have to use save states? Let me know, because I can't remember. So, now once you get used to this game, um, you know where you can go and, and whatnot. Like, normally, if you don't do the slides right, you can, um, slide down, which is fine. It doesn't hurt you. What does hurt you is falling off the edge, which I'm going to try not to do. Huh. Let's see here. You don't want to touch any of these guys unless you've gotten um, and picked up like a, a trophy or whatever they're called. 
I used to have the original of this game, and um, I never had it box, but I did have the the manual, and I wish I still had it. Although I sold it for like eighty dollars, because it actually turns into a poster, and that was probably fifteen years ago I sold that. Um, yeah. But um, I would love to see a high-res scan of that. Okay, so for this one, um, I, I like I like it because um, you can choose what level you go on. In the Commodore 64, oh shoot, just kind of screwed that up. In the Commodore 64, oh, I want to show you how far you can fall. You can fall that far and that's it. If I was to fall from here, I'd fall and die, I think. I could test this out, but I'm not gonna. So, I don't know if you can see, but I can press the number one to go to the second, number two, three, and four. So if I want to go to the second one, I press two, and I just go to two. In the Commodore 64, what ends up happening is these shift colors. And you have to choose which one you go to by when it's on that color. So, I'm actually not paying attention. I'm just watching the gameplay. And here I can fall down. And, hmm, kind of screwing up. But it's okay. Does it really matter? I'm just showing this as an example. And you can hardly see the screen anyway because I... <laughs> I have uh, chose not to, uh... all right, let's go to level three and fall down here. Oh, that's what happens when you die. Don't make that mistake. Now I have to do everything over again. So, am I going to do this correctly this time? I hope so. Yeah, okay. That's what I should have done. I mean, you don't have to do everything the same when you play this game, but it's kind of helpful. All right. Now let me go kill this fellow. He's a little nasty. So apparently in this game, I think I'm trapped in mines or something like that. Um, you know, it's not, it's, it's an 1980s game. So the screen is flashing because I just got over 10,000 points, so I just gained an extra guy. So that's handy. So let's go to level two. Um, I still haven't really Shown you exactly. Can I? Uh, yeah. Ah, oh, shoot. Man, I used to know this game like the back of my hand, which is kind of fun relearning it actually. Um, there's actually a cheat code that lets you, um, you can type in like, a, I think it's the phone number that's written on the screen for a Big Five software. If you type that in, you get a cheat menu and you can choose certain things. And one of them, or maybe I'm thinking of the, uh, you can choose what, what level you start on, things like that. Um, I think you can make it so you don't have to restart the level every single time. I don't remember. Um, I already screwed this one up, but I'll do, I'll do this. I'm just gonna uh, wrap this game up and then I'm gonna try to, I think I die here if I do this. Whee! Oh, I don't. Well, that's handy. All right. I'm acting like I've never played this before. It's kind of, Kind of amusing. For a while there, I was um, really quite good at this game, and now I am not. <laughs> Oops, let's go over. So um, the reason I couldn't continuously wrap this game because I was a, I got a perfect. I could just play it perfectly at this speed, but for every um, time you beat the game, it gets a little faster, and you can also choose to start it faster. But it, um, the default speed is really quite good. I've got to get this fellow. Okay. And um, don't fall off the screen at the edge there. So what ends up happening is the game gets so fast you can't even jump the guy on the second screen or something like that. It just starts and he gets you immediately and you don't even have a chance to jump him. Which, oh, this one. Okay. See if I can't remember how to do this one. This one requires a lot of jumping. Now, this game came out before like games like Mario. Like Super Mario, and people were not like this game doesn't have the same kind of jump as Mario does, which is um, it's very different. So if you're not used to jumps like this, let's see. I can't remember what I'm supposed to do here. Well, obviously I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to clear everything. I think if I do this just right, yeah, I can do that. I can get that guy. I think I have to, yeah. This and this, and then that. Can I? This game. Um, no, I'm not making it look easy because I'm not doing that good. But this game, you have to um, get everything perfect. 
Like the jumps are very, very unforgiving. And to, like I have a, um, you know, it's you can play these games with the. Uh, oh, that wasn't good. Oh, can you jump right there? Yeah. Um, you can play these games with like Genesis controllers. This is not a game you ever want to play with the Genesis controller. It is just awful. It's just awful. Let's see. I need to go way over here. Um, one of the things you need to master in this game is jumping from a standing still position. Because if you don't, you're going to die all the time. I'm going to be surprised if I can do this the first time without dying because I can't really remember the details of how to do it anymore. Yeah. Shoot, I'm going to have to jump this guy when he's bad. <laughs> Darn it. At least they're predictable. There's a time limit on this game, too. I, I think maybe they'll, they'll turn around if I'm not careful. Okay. Kill you. I'm almost out of time. That's why I'm blinking like that. I hope I can do it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. It's going to be so bad if I don't. I did it. Oh, I, I finished it on zero. Wow. Talk about luck. Really, that's just pure luck. Okay, I'm not going to be able to do this one. Okay, if you jump here, you die. Watch. Oh, why did I die? If you read the manual, it says that um, Bounty Bob is allergic to martinis. And if you look, that's a martini glass. So, um, it's not like you don't have a hint, but you do have to read the manual in order to do it, to know it. All right, so th these are kind of annoying. But they, um, man, I'm not going to be able to do this one. This one's going to require some precise jumping, and my skills are just not up to that task anymore. You're not even close to being up to that task because I don't remember. Like, once you get good at this, uh, well, I guess once you get good at any game, you can just play it and beat it. But let's see what I gotta do here. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. Cool. Okay, Bobby. Yeah, we're on a first name basis. That's right. So this game has 10 levels, and if you get good at it, oh, I'm like that. Is that my last guy? If it is, I wanna... Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try zooming in. I'm gonna mess around with the settings a little bit. I got a great score. So we will put my name in the high score table. Press start for, again, and that's it. So the number five is going around the screen because this is a, a, a game by a Big Five Software. So start. That's not what I meant to do. So I'll do a reset, and that's just going to bring me back to basic. So I'm going to stop it here. This will be a good point, and I'm going to go into the menu. And uh, maybe zoom in a little bit and see if I can't get the settings not to be all messed up. I was going to zoom in on the screen, but instead I decided to take out a couple of cartridges just so you could see what they look like. Uh, the one on the right is Defender, and it's a great version of the game. And on the left is Star Raiders. Um, it's probably one of the most popular systems you hear oftentimes if you uh, hear the history of this computer platform that this, uh, in 1979, helped sell many systems. And I played it. I'm not good at it. I don't really know how to play it exactly. Um, but it's neat to look at, and one of these days, which will probably never happen, I'll, I plan to play it. Uh, so I'm going to, just since I have one of these games, I'm going to stuff in a Defender and play that one. Okay, you can see my reflection. Does it matter? Not really. Because um, I'm not... Uh, I'm not trying to make this exactly perfect. I'm actually using the original Defender cartridge. This game came out in 1982, and for its time, it was it looked amazing. And it still looks great now. Check out when you see me explode, which I'll do right away because I'm not any good. Press start. All right. Um, turn it up a little bit because this game has great sound effects. All right, get away. All right. I don't know how this looks, and it's probably not capturing the color quite quite right. But, um, and I don't know the names of all these guys. I know someone called Mutants and, and stuff. I'm gonna get killed just so you can see my explosion. Look at that. Is that, is that great or what? All right. All right. That's all I want to really show this game. Um, I just wanted to show an original cartridge that I have. Um, besides you can see this reflection. You can see, you can see the boxes behind the camera and things like that. Sorry about that. But, uh, uh, it's... I, otherwise, these things would never be made, these videos. Uh, again, I want to thank all my friends who are into the Atari. Chris, Christopher, um, 
just just everybody um, and Quinn you know it just uh, you've inspired me to make this series and um, maybe I'll start capturing some video but not not for a few videos at least I'm actually gonna start making my collection be seen in the next video probably uh, very interesting I noticed here that uh, looking through the camera lens my screen looks blue well it is actually purple and I've seen this as a problem um, capturing stuff before and on my capture card it's a problem um, and I've read why it is, um, why it happens. I don't understand it. Um, I think it's weird. Uh, so the colors are going to look a little off, probably. Uh, I don't know if they even look sharp. But I'll, we'll fix that in future videos. For now, we'll, we'll just look at what we're doing. Um, or I said I was going to play Encounter, so I'll choose number 12. Oh, yeah, you can choose with the mouse, or with the mouse, um, with the um, joystick and the keyboard. So we're just going to start like my friend Quinn did today when I watched his video by pressing Start. And this is a 3D game. Um, I'm a tank, and my object is right. I want to um, follow my radar here and not get shot. And I'm looking for a tank. And after I blow up a certain number of them, I can't remember how many. I think it varies on what level you start off on. Ah, uh, okay. So, um, okay, look out, guy. It'll lead your shots a little bit. There we go. Um, guys behind me, so I've got to move forward. And um, for the time, with this came out in '83, I believe. Oh, I should get killed so you can see. It. Well, I'll get killed eventually anyway, so I don't need to show you now. Huh. Um, so after um, you blow up all the guys, you go into this tunnel, which is so hard. I, I mean, I know I've passed it before, but. It's very difficult. When I first saw this game in the early 90s, I was so impressed by the way it looked. I can't imagine what someone owning an Atari must have thought of it in 1983. I take that back. I, I don't have to imagine because uh, Ernie, the person who I inherited a lot of these things from, um, told me he used to play this in the middle of the night after everyone after his kids went to bed and things like that. Um, and he would just get on his big screen TV. Well, big screen TV back then was a, Probably, you know, 20 inches, um, or a console TV, I don't know what he had. But, and he would just put it on the t family TV instead of using a monitor, and um, just play it in the pitch dark, and just, he said it was, it would still look awesome now. I have a, sitting to the right of this camera, I have a 27 inch, uh, um, is it 27 inch or 32? I think it's 27 inch. Uh, well, that's what happens when you blow up. Not, not a good sign. Um, I've got a 27 inch, uh, Trinitron, and uh, I don't use it very often anymore. I used to use it all the time for video gaming, but it's, it's sort of hidden behind all these stacks of boxes I have out here. So Quinn, um, I don't know if you want to try playing any games for high scores, but you're watching this. Um, if you ever want to play Atari games for high scores, you only have the limited amount, but whatever ones you have on your floppies, let me know and I will I'll try to play, play them with you. And I know... Um, I would like them because since I made those discs for you, they're probably games I like and maybe a few that I knew you would like too. Alright, ooh. I want to kind of clear the screen. I'm playing a novice, which makes it a little easier because it's... This game is incredibly hard. I don't know how many I've got to blow up. I think that's all I want to show for this one. So I'm going to go back and go back to the menu. So I'm uh, to the left of this camera. You can probably see my reflection and um, it's a little uh, bit awkward to play these games. Plus, my uh, thumb is beginning to hurt um, because I have an RSI. So when I, if I do a lot of movements with my thumbs, um, they hurt. So I can't really play a lot of video games much anymore, but I still enjoy playing them now and again. All right, so we're going to start Beam Rider. As I was saying, this is one of my favorite games. I got this on my Commodore 64. It was originally made for the Intellivision, if you can believe it. And it plays pretty closely uh, and pretty good on the Intellivision to all these later versions. Um, in fact, if you look around on the internet, you'll find some people playing this game, and they... And if people don't read... What happens when you don't read documentation is you don't understand what's happening in games. And this is a really good example, because people shoot things that are actually bonuses and give you extra lives. Very common. I've seen it before. All right, we're going to have one player. We're going to start off on level one, just as I can. So basically, I'm inside of a ship, and I get out here, and I'm on these grids. I only can be on this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So I move back and forth between them. On each grid, um, there are up to 15 
um, or not up to 15, there are always 15 UFOs I have to shoot them. And they start off a little, little too easy, but uh, I'm starting off to be easy on myself. All right, so this is what people shoot. This is actually a free guy. <laughs> um, so it's nice to have, especially you can get these early in the game. And you need them later. Um, there's 99 levels. I've gotten up to about level 17 or 18, and that's on rare, rare occasions. Really rare occasions. Um, so um, I also can press up, and I have this special bomb, which I'm not going to use here, or missile. And um, yeah, um, I'm going to clear off this. Quinn, I don't know if I put this on one of your discs. I don't think I did. Um, but if I did, you should play it. If I didn't, um, you should figure out a way to get to... Um, oh, there we go. Now I'm waiting for this um, baddie here. So I just go boink. He's easy to kill on the screen. Later on, he gets protected by um, people. Uh, anyway, Quinn, what I was saying was you have an A50 device, and I gave you Bob Turn. The reason I did that, and I remembered um, after I watched your video, is because you can use Bob Turn with the A50 device and a null modem cable. And if you have a serial adapter for your PC and you can get them for like 15 bucks, you can um, put software onto your uh, PC. Oh man! Ah, crap! All right, you can put, uh, you can uh, like use a terminal program on your PC and transfer it over using X modem or Y modem batch or something like that, and um, put software on there. In fact, back in like I gave you those floppies in 1999, that was the way I did it. I um. That's how I used to transfer software from the internet. I used to use a, a no modem cable. I mean, it's kind of an outdated way to do it, but you have all the stuff for, but you probably have it at your house already. All those things. You don't have to buy anything at all. Um, or you can get some of these devices I was showing you earlier. And they make it so you can play games on the Atari so very easily. This is going to be the last uh, level of this I uh, clear. Alright. Now you've got these guys and they're protecting the mothership. So what you gotta do is you've gotta avoid them. And they, later on it gets much harder. And that's about it. This game continues like that. And later there's way more baddies and they get pretty tough. And some of there's these things that block your... Try this game. If you haven't played it, it's available on the C64, I think on the ColecoVision, the Intellivision. I don't know what all the systems it's available on, but try it. It's a great game. Let's uh, break out of here. Uh, turn it back on, and I'll try one more game, and then I'm going to call it a night, so I can put this video together in the next few days. Uh, River Raid, alright, so, this is a great game, I was just talking about this with uh, the person I met the other night for the TI-99, um, he used to play this on the 2600, and in case you're not following my TI videos, what I'm referring to is I met someone on Atari age, um, and uh, we got together the other night because he's local to me. And um, his name is Wood of Quinky Dink. So he used to play this on the 2600 and it's one of his favorite games. So I'll just show it here. Basically it looks the same. There's some extra features on the Atari uh, 800 version. Yeah. I can't really play these shooters anymore because they hurt my, uh, my, my thumb. Well, let's get, uh, there, there's one of the extra features. It was... Um, the tank. Any other extra features? I, I think there's helicopters but I, that move, but I think those might be on the 2600. There's one of the extra features, maybe the jets, but I think those are on there too. I can't remember what the other extra features are. But uh, I'll show you the scrolling speed. I scroll pretty fast. Can't really play. Oh, balloons. Those are not on the 2600. I can't, it's really hard to play this way by scrolling as fast as you can, but you can scroll fast. Uh, let's see, what else do I got on here? Um, I'm not sure. You don't get to see static, and it, is, it gets in. Okay, all right. So, Boulder Dash is a game that many, many people play. Bonnie Bob Strike Back is one of the rarest cartridges for the system, and it's one of the best games on the system, if not the best. Um, certainly, I'll just start it. Why? Why? Why not just start it to show you? And I love this beginning. This is part two of um, Mario Twenty Forty Nine er. It's definitely the best game of its period. And it uh, came out in like 84. It says 85 here. Maybe it came out in 85? Hmm. This game actually came out for the Atari 5200. And I can't imagine how anyone would have played it with a 5200 controller. Um, yeah, pretty neat way to put a title screen together. 
All right, let's start it. So in this one, you have um, a variable jump, depending on how much you move your joystick. But I didn't know that when I used to first try playing this game. And so I would just die all the time. Oh man, I didn't mean to do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna die already. Yep, I'm gonna die already. <laughs> well, not necessarily, but it ain't gonna be easy. <laughs> I didn't think I'd make it. Um, I've mentioned this before in other uh, games. When I die, it's because I am uh, not paying attention to the game. So you gotta get that, and then go through here, and then you gotta go here. So I used to always die here, because I could never make this jump. Because you just gotta press it and just barely tap the joystick. Same here. I think I can actually fall off that part there. I love the sound effects. You can't really tell, but it's um, it sounds pretty cool. And this game is neat too because um, every single whoops, every single time you um, play it, it's got a different color scheme. Like if I was to die and get to this level again, the color scheme would be totally different. And you probably figured out the point is to fill in the platforms. I hope. <laughs> All right. Oh shoot! I freaked out and I didn't even have to move there. I forgot about that. All right. So you can just stay right there, and the guy comes right at you, but doesn't touch you. Now this is a pretty neat little mechanic. Except now I'm stuck. Man, I'm doing terrible. I'll just jump as far as I can! Whee! That's the end for Adam. What else we got on this system? I'm hoping I make this uh, video maybe 30 to 40 minutes, so... Um, what the games might people be familiar with on here? Jumpman, of course. I might actually have a whole episode about that one. Um, oh, I'll play Stellar Shuttle. This is a game that not many people have heard of, but um, it is a wonderful game nonetheless. Start. So I start at the top on this blue guy, and I've just got to make my way to the bottom and capture all these little guys. It's kind of like a um, Lunar Lander, but you don't have to worry about how fast you're going. Now the guy's coming to me. I can fire and blow up these guys, or if I hold my button down, I go faster. Ooh, and then I just gotta clear the screen. But there get to be more, and I can, by the way, slow down. I either get, there's a helicopter going past. Um, let's shoot this little guy. Wink. Oh, I hate, ay, ay, ay. Um, there gets to be more, more baddies and things like that. I actually saw a, um, ooh, I'm just trying to be quick about it. And it's also, I'm playing quite a bit from the side, so I can't quite line up my stuff. I say that as a great excuse. What I should be doing is blaming my joystick, but I'm not. Let's go a little bit faster. All right. Eventually, I think you might have seen it on the title screen, there's a monster that will get in the way of your guys and when they come to you, I think it eaten, which is pretty amusing. What I was saying though, is there's a homebrew of this, not a homebrew, but someone changed it to make the um, uh, the meteors, or whatever they are, asteroids, um, turn like they do in um, asteroids. It looks pretty cool. I'm drinking my beer. All right, kill this little guy. Sorry, buddy. Oh, man. There's one cheap thing in this game that I don't like. That little yellow meteor that was coming down, or whatever it was, was, um, it can come down at any time. And sometimes when you're getting into your ship, it can come down, which is no good, because you can't avoid it. And there are cheap things in a lot of the games from the 80s and 70s. Maybe even till this day, I don't play a lot of modern games. But, um, that is one of the cheapest ones. I guess only because I did like the game. So I beat it, and now it starts over, and there's this baddie. But check this out. I mean, maybe I should just let him try to get in the way. But you can also kill him, check this out. I killed you. <laughs> Whoops, I also killed myself. Alright, that's that for that. I'm gonna try one more game. I keep saying one more game. But that's because I could play this all night. Um, do, 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 do. My Zoom's Revenge, that's a great game. Plus, 
No, I don't want to play Frogger. I want to play that all night long. Mr. Robot and his Robot Factory Oil as well. Let's play that. It's a great game. Oh, start. My start button's starting not to work too good. All right, so in this one, this is by Sierra Online. I start at the top. This is kind of a ripoff of Ant Eater. Um, but it's much better than the game Ant Eater. Ant Eater was an arcade game. And I'm not doing good. So I'm just collecting the dots, and I can't get, I can't let any of these guys touch, um, touch my um, pipe that I'm laying down. So you've got to try to make it go out of feet. Can't touch that guy either. I think. Can I? Nope. Kills me. Man, I don't play these games enough apparently. Ah. Yeah, I'm just gonna let myself get killed so I can wrap this video up. Oh yeah, if you get to the very bottom, it slows everything down so you'll have a fighting chance. I'll play to the end of the level. Or at least till I die. And I'm gonna die. That is it. So, in the next video, I'm gonna show you what's on the next menu. This is Cartridge 2. I'm not going to play any games on here, but I will show a little bit about it. This is Atlantis. This one right up here at the top. Um, if you're familiar with the 2600, this was basically an expanded version of that one. Um, pretty nice. It's not actually as expanded as, say, the Intellivision version, which has a name, night and day cycle. BC's Quest for Tires is a platformer. Berserk is the arcade game. Caverns of Kafka. Hmm. It's a platformer. Uh, Centipede. There's two versions for the system. Uh, there's one that came out for the Atari 8-bit on cartridge, and it's it's okay, but it's not that great. The 5200 version was um, uh, made uh, better. Choplifter came out in two versions. The original brought a bun version in 1982, and the 88 version looks much better. Crystal Castles in 88 looks much better than the original version. Defender, you've already seen. Deluxe Invaders is by Romix, and it's a great game. Um, it's basically Space Invaders. Dig Dug, this is the 5200 version of the game. Um, I'm going to show this to Quinn right now because he was playing the Atari 8-bit version of the game, I believe, I think. And if he was, yeah, I think this is, I think it looks different than the one he was playing. Let's see. Well, yeah, maybe it looks, maybe this is the one he was playing. I can't, I can't remember. Blow that guy up. Do, 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 do. I used to play this game all of the time on my Commodore 64. Oh, he's going to escape, isn't he? Oh, man. I was just doing this as an example, but I can't believe I let that guy get away. But it's a little more colorful on the Commodore 64. And let's start that up again. We're back to our menu. We've got Donkey Kong. One of the best 8-bit uh, home conversions. Donkey Kong Jr., Galaxian, Gorf. Fine game. I use the HK chipset, so I'm particularly endeared with it. Grid Runner, it's a game by Jeff Minter, who went on, of course, to make a Tempest 2000, but many, many, many great games on the 520 and others. Jarrus, uh, Hard Hat Mac. Strangely, this is one of the very first electronic arts games, and you don't really hear too much about it anymore, but when I first played it in about 84, I thought it was great. Uh, Jawbreaker, this is the original Jawbreaker, um, and it looks like um, Pac Man. Jawbreaker 2. Or Jawbreaker on the 2600 is a totally different game. Joust, um, Kangaroo. This has a neat backstory, which I'm not going to get into. Keystone Capers. It's a 2600 game, but it looks great here. Laser Gates, um, a rare 2600 game by Imagic. Um, I think it's pretty good. Mario Brothers. Um, I'm not sure who's seen Mario Brothers before. Um, I listen to Atari. Maybe I'll, sh I'll end up with that one. All right. Wizard of War, which uses port 2 instead of port 1. Tapper. Superfly, this game is only 1K. It came out in 2003. It's a homebrew. Um, it's very good. Su uh, Super Cobra, did I ever say that? Spy Hunter. Um, just a couple of nights ago, I was looking at a Spy Hunter um, clone for the ti 99 That's a homebrew. Uses a, an enhanced video chip. The Seamus Quick Step, which is by a Magic and was released on the uh, Atari 2600. This one has a lot of extra features and is one of the best two player games I know of. Uh, on an Apis platform. Preppy is basically um, Frogger. And then we've got Popeye. Puyin is an arcade game. Pango is an arcade game. Pathfinder is a great game that I think only came out on the Atari 
at the Atari 64. The Commodore 64 and the Atari 8-bit. Nibbler, which is similar to a game I've been playing on the TI-99. Moon Patrol, Montezuma's Revenge. I hmm. wonder why that one's on here as well. Well, there's two of them. That's probably why it was also on the first one. Uh, Millipede, which is, um, of course, a Centipede Part 2 and looks great on the system. And we're going to end up, I'm going to close this game out by playing Mario. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is so that, um, well, just because it looks good. All right, this is the version that came out for the XE. The original version looks the same as the one on the, um, the colors don't look quite right on here. It looks kind of blurry. I'm going to have to figure out a way to get around that. You know Mario. Everyone knows Mario. I was playing this correctly. I'll just get him this way. I'll clear one screen. I keep saying that, but this time I mean it. This time I mean it. Oh, what did I do? I already messed up. Boink. So what's neat about this is this one was made for the Atari after Super Mario came out. Alright, well, I'm going to pop everyone up on the screen with the PAL, and I'm going to say goodbye. And in the next video, I'll show some more Atari stuff. Maybe uh, jump back to an Amiga video or a TI video. I haven't made an Astrid video in a while, but I have a lot to show on that system. So, ah, run away, run away! Can I loop I can, thankfully. Alright. This guy's not happy with me. I can actually clear the screen if I get him now. Although he, I think he's going to get up much faster now. Alright. Yep. Now I think the next level is the crabs. Um, yeah. I'll fade out here and, uh, or maybe it's not, wait a minute. Is there not crabs here? Hmm. Maybe eventually? Come on, where are the crabs? Well, either way, I'm going to fade out here. Um, thanks for watching and I uh, hope you join me for the next video. Alright. Bye-bye. I'm dead. I would be remiss if I didn't show you this last thing. It was a piece of hardware I showed earlier. It uh, emulates a disk drive. Um, when you turn on the system, you get uh, this title screen, and then you can press Option, and you can choose what disk you want to load from. I'm going to load from um, Temple of Appsi. If you can hear that noise, that's how much faster the floppy drives loads. Normally, this would probably take about 30 seconds, 45 seconds to load. It's already loaded. And um, we will start it. And I can um, load a character, create a character. I'm going to create a quick character. Uh, I'm going to accept him. We're going to call him Bally because, you know, that's also a name that's worthy, not just Adam. And I don't have any weapons. I don't have anything, so I'll buy some arrows. Um, you have to have a bow to buy arrows. Of course I do. So let's buy a bow. Um, I'm not sure how loud that is. It's probably pretty loud. But, uh, what does that offer, Adam? Yes, I can barter with this guy. I'm just going to say 12. I'm going to buy some arrows, and that'll be that. And I'm going to go into the dungeon, and I'm going to uh, fight a guy or two, and then I'm going to really close out this video. Um, I say that now. Anyway. So let's buy some arrows. Let's buy, uh, 10. Let's enter the dungeon. Uh, let's have him be slow. Let's just enter the Temple of Apshai, level four. And I am in the Temple of Apshai. I can move forward. Um, I can pick that up. Now, this game normally came with a book. And um, you can just place with the keyboard or the um, uh, joystick, but it's much better to play with the keyboard. I can do an exam in here, found a secret door. Let's go through it, and then I'm going to maybe try to see. I don't know if I have any more discs on that card, actually. Is it over open? Yeah. And uh, there's a baddie. I can shoot him. Fire. And I killed him. And another one. And I guess I can... Oop, I missed you. Um, I don't have anything else. So I will um, reboot the system. Turn it on. And let's see if I have any other floppies. If I have any other floppies, you'll be in luck because you'll get to see one more game or so. If not, then you won't. All right, this game uh, obviously came out in 2018. It's a uh, conversion from the Commodore 64. Um, it's a 3D game. Uh, 
It requires, I believe, at least 128k of RAM, which is what the 130 has. Um, has pretty neat music. Um, let's see if I can't get it to start. I don't know if I even know how to play it. I've played this just a few times. Um, Alright. Single player. Main. We'll go with Bally. And I don't know any of what this means, but that's okay. Uh, we'll just start racing session. I'm going to die right away, I'm sure. Um, okay, sounds great. And this is what my track is going to look like. That's giving me an overview. Steer to rotate view or fire to continue. So I can uh, give different views of the same track. So it's drawing it in 3D. I don't know if you can see that quite, what it is. So press the button. Well, first I gotta get put on the track. So basically I'm being lifted and put on this, this track. Oh, start to drop. Here we go. I guess I don't have to press anything. I don't know. Oh, there's a little guy. Well, if this looks very 3D to you, but it is. Now here I'm gonna crash. Yep, I knew I would. Perfect place to fade out. Thanks for watching, guys. This video turned out to be longer than I expected, but I had a lot of fun making it, period. In my second video, I'm actually going to use some footage I shot about three years ago of a game called O'Reilly's Mine. I had completely forgotten that I recorded this experimental footage. When I recorded it, I was trying to see if I could get my camera to focus better and I used manual focus in order to get a better picture, which you'll see when I post that video. Hopefully, I'll remember how to do that again, and the footage in my next video will be a little bit better, or I can try to capture it directly, although I prefer not to do that because it ends up taking much more time. And if anyone has any suggestions of any games I'd like to see on this system, or any more of my collection, which is huge, including probably easily 100 books on the Atari, uh, let me know. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you around next time.